everybody welcome back thank you for joining me i've got some beautiful colors mixed up some oranges some blues deep purple red and pearl white um, and i'm going to do lots of little flip cups on a long canvas um, the paints have all got um, silicon in them so i'm just gonna see see what happens really have no expectations of what this would look like um they're leftover paints from a previous pour so um i'm just excited to to play with them so let, let me show you these are the colours. So I've got pearl white, um, permanent blue violet uh, by Amsterdam, vermilion, um, there's a metallic blue, iridescent orange yellow by Pebio, king's blue by Amsterdam, carmine by Amsterdam, um, oh, I've forgotten, another blue by Amsterdam, um, and bronze, primary cyan, that one, and then bronze. Um, they're all mixed with PVA glue and water. Let me show you the consistency. In fact, I'll show you a non-iridescent one because it's much easier to show you. It's quite runny. So I've mixed PVA glue and water pouring medium, two parts PVA glue to one part water. And then I've mixed two parts pouring medium to one part paint. So they are quite runny. And the reason for that is I want quite a nice smooth finish to the painting. So I've got seven little paper cups here. I cannot decide between seven or eight. I like an odd number, so seven, but seven is such a lot, <laughs> such a lot. Not, not sure yet. Um, so I've got different amounts of each of the paints. So for example, this shiny blue, there's hardly any of that. So I'm just gonna have to um, just, yeah, the, the amount of each color will vary in each cup. So I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna just, Put a little layer on the bottom of each of the purple. And then I think I'm just going to have to drizzle the blue. Just so I get a little bit of it in each cup. So this canvas is a 20 by 50 centimetre deep edged canvas. Um, I've already done a pour on this canvas um, a long time ago, but didn't like it. Um, so I've just primed it with gesso and it just gives it that chalky feeling so that the new paints will stick to it. Um, I've got push pins in the back. In fact, look, it was a finished painting. So I'd signed it, put my lay my sticker on it. Um, but then a long time ago, but now decided I don't like it. So I'd rather have the new canvas to work on. So I'm going to do six flip cups in a row. So um, now it's quite runny paint, so I could spill this everywhere. <laughs> if you don't get them in quite the right place to start with, it doesn't matter because once they're on, you can actually move them and you can adjust them. So for example, that one I want a bit closer to the edge. So just pushing down, I'm just sort of twisting it a little bit. <clears throat> that one doesn't want to move. Right, so I think I'm going to Flip them over and then pull the paint. There's plenty of paint in here. Um, so I'm going to tip it and then pull it towards me. Right, absolutely loads of paint. I'm not gonna torch at the moment. You can see cells popping up already. It's a quite a thin mixture. <clears throat> so 
if I torch now, my cells will, I'll just have huge cells by the time I've stretched them out. As you can see, there's some big cells already. So I'm going to cover my canvas, then I'm going to torch. So let's just get this edge covered. Now, often I would put down um, some, uh, do use a corner catcher for this, but because I know I've got so much paint and I know it's such fluid paint, there's just no need. Right, do you see what I mean about the cells? That is one cell that is totally distorted. So if I'd have torched at the beginning, my whole painting now would be covered in these massive, massive splodges. Right, so now I'm going to torch. I'm going to try and torch quite gently because I think this could just explode with cells otherwise which I might end up wanting it to, but um, let's go slowly to start with. So slowly means I'm just holding the torch up quite high and just trying to take my time. If I put the torch down really low, I will instantly get hundreds of cells, which sometimes I do and I like that. It's a really satisfying process, but I'm just cautious because this mixture is so thin. See, now I've got that point now where I'm slightly frustrated because I want more cells. So I can feel myself just thinking, oh, who cares? Let's just get closer. And now and that's what I'm doing. It happens every time. So I'm just trying to control it, trying to not give in and get too close. Another good trick is just to torch and then just to walk away for five minutes and then come back and see what you've got because the t all these cells, as they're coming to the surface, they would just keep expanding. Right, that is what I'm going to do. I'm putting my torch down. I'm going to leave it for a few minutes. I'm so proud of myself. I have went and made myself a cup of coffee and have come back and I love it. Um, so I've got a really good balance of cells. So you can see the stripes still, which I was really keen to try and try and keep. So you can see the underlying pattern, but the cells are just, they're, they're insane. I'm not tilting it because I don't want them to get any bigger. Um, my favourite section of cells are these beautiful red and white ones that, and orange that have made the pink. Um, what such bold colours. They've mixed and muddied a bit there to make a greeny colour. But other than that, really, you've got a lot of very separate, distinct colours. Um, there's a massive band of orange there and the most unusual cell there. It's not particularly round and that's, again, because the colours are so runny. Um, and I think I just, I love it because it's on this wonderful shaped canvas, this nice long canvas. The blue, that massive blue cell there has distorted because it's now got some cells within that cell. Um, it just seems very bright and very bold, very happy. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to tilt it. I am going to leave it exactly how it is. So I'll be back when it's dry. So it's now dry and unfortunately it's really bad news. Um, it hasn't dried well. The paints I've realised now were just too fluid and it has totally moved, totally skewed. So all my beautiful round cells that I had at the beginning are now totally distorted. Um, so I'm really disappointed. I don't know what I will do with this, but I, I probably won't keep it. Um, but I thought I would just show you the video anyway because it's, it's a lesson learned. Don't do a flip cup if the paints are too runny, um, unless you want this sort of look, of course. So um, I was so disappointed, I thought, well, I'll just delete the video. I won't show you the video. But actually, I thought, well, no, it's a, it's a learning curve, isn't it? For me, for everyone, we're all learning how to, what, what works, what doesn't work. So I thought, well, actually, I am going to show you. This is what happens if you do a um, pour when the paints are just too runny, too fluid. Interestingly, the orange, 
they, the orange cells have kept their shape a bit more. So maybe that shows the orange was a slightly thicker consistency. Um, but you can see down here, the red and the blue, just totally swampy, just totally distorted. Um, I also wonder if it wasn't perfectly flat as it was drying, because it looks like all the colours have sort of moved down to the bottom of the canvas. Um, on a positive, I really like the colours. And I had thought about maybe keeping it for some sort of embellishment. I, I just don't know. I'm not sure I like it enough. But if you have any ideas of how I could use this, do let me know. Um, great. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please do subscribe to my channel. Take care, everyone. Bye.